Hello and welcome to another Maggie's Bears, Wines and Spirits review. Today you're going to be reviewing a lager, for a change, and uh, Cobra. One of the, out of all the world lagers, because it is classed as a world lager, not a beer, you know. Uh, even though they call it premium beer on the front, it's classed as a world lager. Um, when I worked at Sainsbury's, it was always one of the strongest of the cellars in the bottles. This, Estrella, um, Peroni of course, and Bira Moretta, they were the kings of the uh, bottles. Um, brewed in the UK and India, brewed in the UK by Molson Coors, otherwise known as Carly. Used to be brewed by Charles Wells, in, you know, in an age past before they went bankrupt. So, we'll give it a pour and uh, see how it cooks. It's a midday uh, lager, I don't usually drink at midday to be fair, but um, I'm decorating uh, the, my son's bedroom, been doing it for two and a half hours already, and uh, there's so much painting I can take, so nice amber colour, good lacing, can't really see the carbonation in this glass, but really good lacing, nice white head. Nice um, light malt aroma. Whoa. So most people would have this with a curry, you know, Indian curries, but you know, it's Indian. So you'd place it with curries, um, which, is, which is a good thing to match your beers with the countries where they originate from. So if you're having something like a Chinese, and so you get something like Singer, you know, beers like that. Hopefully I've got it right, you know, it's early in the day. Now this is a step up from the likes of Carling and Foster's and, the, and the, them, you know. Yes, it's a lager. Lagers don't really match up against real ales simply because you can't do that much with lagers although today's craft lagers are breaking that divide but when does a craft lager become a craft beer you know um you've got to believe what's written on the tin or the bottle you know Duh. so even though this is a more traditional lager it hasn't got lots of you know different taste in it it still has what it does have is a taste that, for me, is the best of what l normal lager can offer. You know, I've only had a few sips and I can, you know, straight away it brings me back to when I've had it before and uh, it's one of the beers, one of the lagers well, that, that I really like. Same goes for Estrella and Birra Moretti. Although I do prefer the Birra Moretti Siciliana Toscanas. You know, them, the two other ones they brought out like their version of craft lagers because they they've actually got the the quality of bit of moretti but with the uh with additional taste that you know standard lagers have not got oh that is nice i mean i'm not a curry eater but you know i could just fancy a very very mild curry to go with this i would go down the treat now, on the internet, it doesn't really say much really about Co, but let me go back because that page didn't say much. On Beer Advocate, it's got a 2.8 out of 5. But like I've said again, um, you, you're classing it as a, a lager in a beer world. You know, um, when, when I do reviews, I class everything in their own category because it's jolly unfair to, to review something against like reviewing this against something like King Goblin. King Goblin's one of the, the best real ales in the country, you know, in this country, possibly the world. Whereas this is one of the best, the best lagers, you know. But the two, you know, they don't really match. You can't really put one against the other. Just as you couldn't put a wine against the beer as well. So, on the aroma. 
light malt. I've got to block some there so it's not helping on the taste. Similar, similar to a lot of other lagers really, like light malts, grasses, hay. But in a way it's done, in a way that it tastes of quality. Strange, isn't it? I can something taste of quality. Well, you know when you drink it, you know, like you do with a wine, you know. You can, where was it? I did a, uh, took the bottle now, I did a, a Free Mills uh, red wine the other day. And um, you put that against something like an Italian Barola and there's a gulf, and, you know. Uh, not, not, not just the gulf, there's like, a, there's like an ocean in between. But anyway, that's been horrible, I suppose, in some ways. But that wine I reviewed the other day was the worst and the lowest scoring review I've ever done on, on these reviews. And I try to be right. I don't, you know, you try not to downbeat something. Because obviously someone's gone to the effort to making these beers, lagers, spirits, ciders, whatever. But when they make driv drivel like that, well. So what it is, damn refreshing. Lovely little, um, and the aftertaste, lovely aftertaste, just, you know, nothing nasty about it. Coats your mouth in it, and it, and that's, you know, part of it. It's absolutely lovely. I'll try and see if it brings up anything about what it tastes like, on other, what other people have got out of it. Yeah, 2.8 out of five, poor, what a load of drivel. So there you are, this is better. 4.3 out of 5. Lovely lager, well balanced, refreshing and crisp. Lack of bitterness. Carbonation is on the low side. Would enjoy a more highly carbonated version? I don't think so. I don't think it needs it. The beer has recently been revised with new packaging and a 4.5% ABV. Someone's ears gave it a 1.89 out of 5. This appears to be made in England as well as India. And who knows where else? Let's get it straight. All beers, lagers, and most wines in that matter, uh, either made in England or the, the syrup or whatever it is is ship, shipped to England and brewed and, and the rest of the process is done here. Because you can't ship, say, one million bottles of wine from Australia and get it here without losing half of them, you know. But if you put it in syrup form, and then brew it, you know, not syrup, but you know, grape form, whatever the form it needs to be. And then most, and you look on bottles, and uh, if they're being honest, they'll tell you that. I hope I'm reviewing the right listing for it. It's truly unfathomable to me that a simple lager like this can be as gross as this, and it ranks amongst the worst beers I've ever had. Well, it's not a beer, it's a lager, you wazzock. It seems impossibly cheap, like cutting corners beyond the usual adjuncts. This hardly tastes like beer at all, which, which it isn't. It's flat in aroma and flavour, stale even, without hardly and barley character to it, and with very little going on at all, aside from some finishing metallics and even a chemical crispness. Well. And uh, that's where some reviewers haven't got a clue, you know. For me, beautiful, absolute quality lager. And uh, I've waited for a while to, to do this. I've tried to get through all the best key lagers. And it's remembering what you've reviewed these days, because now up to 563 or four reviews. And I haven't reviewed that many twice, because uh, you know, you don't want to really, but. That's quality. So, pure quality throughout. Amber body, white head, good lacing, no carbonation that I could see in that glass. It might be the glass that's at fault. Um, lovely taste of light malt grasses, hey. Similar to any other lager in that way, but comes through much more quality. It's got a refined taste to it. Ignore these bloody reviews where they say, Oh, it don't taste like beer. Well, it beer. It's lager. End of. It says premium beer on the cat on the labels, but that easy you ignore that because it's actually a lager. Out of five, one of the best, one of the best 
traditional type lagers, you know, obviously not your craft lager, it's not that type of lager, but one of your best traditional lagers out there. Um, obviously it goes well with curries, which it would do any Indian food, because it's that's where it comes from, you know, it's, it originates from. Out of five. For me, the f probably the finest of the law of the world lagers, four point six out of five, absolute barnstorming effort, and uh, I've got a bit more to drink as well after the review. Thanks for watching, and uh, back to painting. See you later.